Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having an amazing day. Now in today's video, I'm going to be overwintering some of my, um, all of my carnivorous plants and talking a little bit about them. And um, I've got a few different types in my collection. I have here the Venus flytrap, um, commonly called, um, yeah, Dionea muscopala, commonly called the Venus flytrap. Here, Drosera capensis, commonly known as the sundews. And it has been flowering, lovely, all over all over the fall and um, here we have Saracenia and this one is Saracenia purpurea and I also have some Nepenthes plants as well commonly known as the monkey pitcher plants monkey cup pitcher plants that I've already put upstairs in my grow room because the nights are getting pretty chilly here here now in Ireland and I'm going to talk a little bit about each type of plant I'm going to be covering them because I have the most commonly seen carnivorous plants um, please do bear in mind this is not necessarily um, a strictly care overwintering care video because I'm not an absolute expert on carnivorous plants um, my my forte is cacti and succulents um, carnivorous plants is secondary but I do have a passion for these plants too um, so they, it, bear in mind that, uh, for example, Dros Drosera, the sundews, some are more tropical than others and will need warmer temperatures. But um, this one, Drosera capensis, is the most commonly one. And this is a little bit different to other types of carnivorous plants in its care requirements for winter, so I'm going to talk about that in a minute. First of all here we have the commonly seen um, Dionea muscopala, or more, com more commonly known as the Venus flytrap. This one here on the left is ones I've actually grown from seed a few years ago now. They're still extremely tiny. They do sort of get big and then they sort of die back every year and they've put on a bit of growth this year. And um, this is actually from seed from my own uh, my own um, Venus flytrap plant, which was actually from this one here. I used to have a few different types of Venus flytraps, but I gave them away to my, my, um, my little neighbour here because he's really getting into carnivorous plants and I had to make a bit more space for some of my other plants and they're doing very well but this was my main um, Venus flytrap here and it produced a lovely flower a few a couple of years ago three years ago now and I pollinated the flowers and um, this is the result with the seed and if you want to know how I did it and you're interested if ever you want to grow Venus flytrap from seed please do check out a video I've made on how to grow Venus flytrap from seed links up above and also, if you ever have flowers on them, wrong time of year now, hopefully in the spring or summer, if you've given them a dormancy, um, do check out the video I've made on how to pollinate Venus flytrap flowers to get seed. Links also up above. <laughs> Just to tell you a little bit of history of, of these, um, these little young seedlings here. They're extremely slow growing. As I say, they're probably about three years old now and they're still very, very, very tiny. Um, but these, now the Venus flytrap is very, very cold hardy. In fact, it can take up to minus 10 degrees Celsius, um, for, which is about 14 degrees Fahrenheit. And they actually prefer to have a cool um, winter rest period because they do like to go back to a little bit of a, they have little rhizomes underneath and they like to go back to that. So sometimes the plant would, would die back to just a couple of little tiny leaves and then spend out, uh, shoot out new growth in the spring and summer. Or sometimes it may even go back completely to the soil and people who are new to these plants will think the plants have died and they throw them away, think oh it's died, you know, when really it's just resting. So if this happens to your plant, this is normally it's, it's resting, hopefully if it's not rotting. And it's normal for the leaves, as the plant does die back for the winter, for its dormancy, these leaves will start to go, I've actually pruned these off, otherwise I would have shown you. And I have made a video on how to prune them, so I'm going to talk about that in a minute. These leaves will go back, um, they'll go black and just die back. And um, it's normal, sometimes you just come off really easy or you can cut them back. If the plant's not dying, this is just preparing for its winter dormancy. And I've made a video on how to prune the dead leaves off carnivorous plants. So do check that out as well if you want to know about that. Links up above. Um, it's good to prune the back because it helps to keep mould and fungus at bay. And it also makes the plant look a bit neater. And I'm going to be keeping these damp. They need to be kept damp um, at all times when they're overwintering um, with, with, with Venus flytraps. Uh, with rainwater. If you can't get rainwater, then use distilled water or deionized water, which you can get from supermarkets. But I'm lucky here in Ireland. I never have to run it, worry about running out of rainwater. Um, but whereas in the spring and summer when they're actively growing, I would leave about an, about an inch of water in the bottom of the pot so they're always in water. Um, when I'm overwintering these, they are going to be kept completely damp at all times, but they're not going to be sitting in water as such because they just need to stop, just 
they, it's not good to encourage them to be sitting in totally damp water and there's no need because they're going to be resting but they do need to be kept watered um, the soil has to be moist at all times totally different care requirements to um, cacti which is why I don't want to overwinter them into the cacti succulent polytunnel because that's going to be kept very arid and these can just be have to be kept watered throughout the winter months so they're going to have their own little greenhouse now this is a bit different to other type of carnivorous plants in its care. This is Drosera capensis and it's the same with all Drosera's. Some are more tropical and they do need to be kept frost free, above freezing. But this particular type of Drosera, it can take a light frost and we get very, very mild temperatures here. Here in Ireland anyway, so we very rarely get frost. If we do, it never drops much below minus two or three at the very most. But this particular um, carnivorous plant can, has, doesn't have an, a winter dormancy like the other carnivorous plants do it's more it's it's not necessarily a tropical but it can be kept as a tropical as well and you have the option I have the option of what I can do with this I can overwinter this in the polytunnel and keep it cold like the uh, Venus flytraps and the Saracenia and it will die back um, it may not completely stop growing but it may die back and just prune it back it'll come back again in the spring and summer when temperatures warm up or I've got the option of actually overwintering it inside the house and I'm going to overwinter inside the house the reason being these plants are fantastic because as you can see there they're great at catching them little annoying little fungus gnats that you get flying around the soils and this is going to be pretty good to have in my grow room and I want to keep it growing as well I think it's a lovely attractive plant but as I say, if I didn't want to, I could overwinter it in, in a cool, in the, in, the green, in the greenhouse and it would just die back and re-come up in the spring. But it doesn't have to have a winter dormancy like Venus flytrap or Saracenia do. You see, if you don't give the ones that like a winter dormancy, like the, the Venus flytraps and the Saracenias, then they can they'll continue to grow in warmer temperatures if you're overwintering inside and they tend to grow weak and spindly and they won't necessarily flower for you the following year and once you overwinter the second or third time warm and they're not having a proper winter rest it can eventually really weaken the plant so it's best if you can to give them a dormancy. I'm lucky that I've got the little greenhouse this year to put them into but this one does not have to have um, an overwintering period it's purely optional this is with Drosera's only and in this case I'm going to be bringing the into my grow room upstairs and still keeping it actively growing and it's going to continue to grow and continue to catch little flies hopefully I won't get too many in my grow room but that's where it's going to be going I'm going to show you where I'm going to be putting it and um, it's not going to it doesn't need that to say a winter rest like the others so it's not going to come to any harm with that one so there we go that's the three there and I've got Nepenthes upstairs as well which I'm going to talk about in a bit but first of all I'm going to put the um, Venus flytraps and the Saracenia into my little greenhouse and show you what they look like when they're in there. Now here they, are, here they are put away in my little greenhouse and this little greenhouse is where I'm going to be overwintering as I say some of the garden plants, some of my pelagoniums and things like that and my monkey puzzle trees and this is going to be an unheated greenhouse, a little one here. Um, probably unless we had severe weather I would have to worry about heating it but as I say the, the carnivorous plants here are going to do fine and that's the Saracenia purpurea there and the Venus flytraps so um, that's then put away for their winter quarters and all I have to do is make sure that they're topped up with rainwater every few days so they don't dry out now guys here I am in my grow room here and I've put the Drosera capensis here um, where it's going to get plenty of light and as I say I've decided to keep it in the warmth so it's going to carry on growing as I say this is the one the one carnivorous plant that you can choose whether you want to have a dormancy or whether you want to keep it growing it's not one that has to have a winter dormancy unlike the Saracenias and the Venus flytrap so this is going to carry on and carry on catching any of them horrible annoying fungus gnats that thankfully I shouldn't have a problem with here but they do sometimes appear and here are my Nepenthes, commonly called the, um, the monkey, pitcher monkey cup pitcher plants, as you can see. Gorgeous big pictures on that. Just look at that, guys. And these are quite amazing, amazing carnivorous plants because they collect fluid there in their lovely pitchers. Um, and obviously insects fall in and get trapped and they, that's how they di digest their juices through these amazing pitchers here. 
and it's forming new ones here. Now, Nepenthes are, are very different. Again, they're tropical carnivorous plants, so it's absolutely necessary that you overwinter them in a warm environment. And again, they do carry on growing. They're not one that have to have a, a winter dormancy. They will tend to slow down their growth during winter because obviously the shorter day lengths and usually the cooler temperatures, but they don't have a, a winter rest totally like Saracenia and um, Venus flytrap would, they would, these will carry on growing just at a slower rate. As I say, this one here is still producing lovely pictures. Look at that one before it opens up, it's just forming there, and then the lid suddenly pops open and it's all done. Gorgeous. And with, with Nepenthes, it's absolutely essential that you overwinter them at a minimum degree of about 10 to 12 celsius which is about 50 to 55 degrees fahrenheit as i say these are in my grow room here which is also my office so it's always going to be kept pretty warm so no problem there but you can't overwinter them in a cold greenhouse guys it has to be um, warm so it's totally different these are totally tropical and um have a three different types here and if you want to know how to um, take cuttings and how to prune the pentes links up above to a video I've made on how to take cuttings and prune the pentes this one is from my original very very old nepenthes I'd had for over 25 years and it started to die back um, obviously I'd had it for a long time and this is the cuttings that I took from the plant and the, the name of the plant and happy to say it's taken really really well as you can see there are lots of little little pictures forming baby pictures and um, that is a little baby one on the way so uh, wonderful there so guys that's a little bit about my overwintering plants for my carnivorous plants and do you do any of you guys have carnivorous plants and if you do what do you grow and how do you overwinter them i'll be interested to see because lots of people have different methods so guys thank you so much for watching and i want to send you loads of love heaps of happiness and tons and tons of plant power from across the Emerald Isle. And until the next video, bye.